In theory, it's also possible to put in an i7 4980HQ. There is basically this weird seller on Taobao which solders those off of MacBook Pros and puts them on the adapter board or something. But the whole business is kind of really shady. Well, y'all knew this was coming, so there you go. In this box we have Intel i7 4980HQ from Taobao. It just came today in this box. So today we're going to unbox it, we're going to install it on ThinkPad, T440p over there, see how it performs, see if it even works, etc. A couple of words about this processor before we go on. This processor was initially only available in solder ink configuration. It was installed, among others, on MacBook Pro 2014 and 2015 models. However, our friends over in China, they're absolutely amazing. So what they do with those CPUs is they solder them off the motherboards and they put them on PG adapter boards and then they sell it for basically all kinds of sockets. I think even Linus Tech Tips once made a video where he installed this CPU on a desktop machine with a desktop Intel socket. The catch with this CPU is that you can't really buy it on eBay or Amazon or even Aliexpress. It's only sold on Taobao and it's only available in China. So unless you speak fluent Chinese or have a friend who lives in China, you will need to use an intermediary. I personally use superbuy.com. I'm not affiliated with them. They're not paying me for that. The service was pretty nice and they even made some pictures of the processor when it arrived at their warehouse. So yeah, there were no issues with superbuy.com and I guess I can only recommend that website. The reason people are so interested about the CPU despite all the trouble of getting it and kind of a high price tag is because it's much powerful than any CPUs that are officially supported on T440p. For example, 4712MQ and 4900MQ. It also has Intel Iris graphics instead of Intel HD graphics and some benchmarks on the web suggest that it's even more powerful than NVIDIA GeForce 730M, which is a dedicated graphics option for T440p. However, this performance does come with a price. This is fine. 4980HQ has a DDP of 57 watts. Just for comparison, 4702MQ that I currently have in my TP40P has TDP of 35 watts. This might be a problem, especially considering the poor thermal design of the docking station. I mostly use this computer in the docking station. So I already ordered some liquid metal paste. I went for a grizzly thermal conductor knot and it should arrive pretty soon. But for now, we're just gonna use uh, Arctic MX4. I just wanna see if the CPU works at all so that if it doesn't, well, at least uh, there's gonna be no liquid metal wasted for nothing. <laughs> so far, only a few people try to install this CPU on ThinkPad T440p. There are about three or five people on Reddit that succeeded. Other ones said they either got faulty CPU or wrong CPU. In any case, I want to try it today, I want to try to install it. And if it doesn't work, well, this will be a cautionary tale to everyone who was looking into buying the CPU. This will be a video in which we conclude that no, the CPU is garbage, there is too much risk involved here and you should not buy it. But if it works, well, I guess it will be a first video to actually feature the CPU in ThinkPad T440p. All in all, this CPU cost me about 130 euros. That's with shipping, taxes, etc. By the way, huge thanks to Neurogamer who helped me source this CPU. Without you, my friend, this video literally wouldn't be a thing, I guess. <laughs> okay, so enough talk. Let's unbox this beauty, let's install it, and let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, then let's see what's inside the box then, shall we? So here we have the CPU itself. Let's open bubble wrap. Wow, it's, the packaging is really cool. Let's see if there's actually anything inside because it kind of seems very light. And there it is. There it is. Now let's check with some bent pins. It looks like there are no bent pins, everything is okay. Let me just focus the camera real quick. All right, so we have the packaging out of the way. And now let's try to actually install it and hope that it doesn't fry the motherboard. <laughs> Let 
I think we're in. No? Nope. Maybe it didn't unlock it completely. Let me see. There's something that won't let it fall in. I wonder what that is. Ah, there is actually a bent pin, I think. Yep. Surprise, motherfucker. Okay, let me try to strain it real quick off camera. And then I'll try again. So the whole unbending the pins business did take some time, but at the end the CPU is in. It's sitting pretty tight, so I guess we're going to remove this paper thingy, the sticker, put some thermal paste on, and try to see if it boots, I guess. All right, we're done here. Well, I'm pretty nervous. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I actually don't know if it's gonna work. You guys ready? I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> Whew, okay. Well, if, if this doesn't work, if, if this blows up and I don't survive this, please tell my mama I love her. Whew, let's go. We got the post. Wow, okay. The next day. So I ran some quick benchmarks, Cinebench, uh, Luxmark, Open Arena, and as I anticipated, the CPU is held back a lot by a poorly designed cooling system in T440p. Even though in most benchmarks it performed much better than 4702MQ that I had before in this laptop, in Luxmark it actually performed worse, which kind of indicates that if there's a workload that requires both CPU and GPU, the performance is going to degrade a lot, since Intel Iris Graphics 5200 is much more power hungry than uh, Intel HD 4600 that we have in 4702MQ. On the other hand, the new CPU performed much better in Open Arena, I think we gained about 17 to 20 FPS. Luckily, I also received the liquid metal compound today, and, and as soon as I received it in mail, I actually went ahead and applied it. Applying liquid metal compound is kind of a finicky process. The problem with it is, unlike thermal paste, it's also electrically conductive, which means you have to isolate basically everything on your CPU except for the actual surface that you apply a thermal compound on. For that I used electric tape, you can also use transparent nail polish. So anyway, after applying liquid metal paste, I booted the computer up and tried to run the same benchmarks again. And to my utter bewilderment, the results were actually worse. In some cases they were kind of the same as with the Arctic MX4 thermal compound, but in Luxmark for example and in Open Arena, the results were straight out worse than with normal thermal paste. I was so shocked by the results, I thought I actually didn't apply the liquid metal correctly, so I took the laptop apart again and tried to reapply the compound. By the way, I used up the whole tube, so next time I do it, I have to order it again. <laughs> but alas, no, the results didn't really improve after I reapplied liquid metal again. I'm not sure what it is, I'm not sure what the reason is, but I'll continue looking into it and we'll see how that goes. So yeah, even though I kind of expected the results to be better and I'm slightly disappointed by the fact that liquid metal didn't really help with the thermal throttling, overall I'm happy by how this experiment turned out. I do plan to replace the heatsink on my T4P eventually. As a matter of fact, I just went on r slash ThinkPad and the first post there was the improved heatsink for T440p. Basically, a Reddit user, Dexham, took the dedicated GPU heatsink from T440p. He modified it so that the additional heat pipe goes to the CPU. I think this should help a lot with thermals on this processor. So as soon as Dexham publishes the instructions or some notes about how he did it, I will try to do it as well. And I will definitely make a new video with more benchmarks and maybe some games to actually test whether this heatsink actually makes things better. The second biggest problem with the CPU is that the onboard display port on T440p unfortunately doesn't work with this processor. Nobody actually knows the reason as to why. Some people speculate that maybe the lanes aren't connected properly on the adapter, but nevertheless VGA still works and the display port on the docking station still works perfectly fine and it's only basically the mini display port on the laptop itself that doesn't work. I also want to mention that the CPU works 
perfectly fine with Hackintosh. I didn't have to change anything. It recognized the Iris Graphics Pro right away and basically no configuration needed. Everything works out of the box and it's so great. So yeah, that's basically my experience with the CPU. I hope your curiosity is now satisfied since there's not much information about the CPU in ThinkPad T40p on the internet. Now there's a whole video about it, so there you go. At the end I would say that getting this CPU is only worth it if you really want to experiment with something new, something unusual, and if you want that improved graphics performance. Because in my opinion, T440p is not really a gaming machine to begin with, and Intel Iris graphics, even though it performs better than the integrated Haswell graphics on the officially supported CPUs, it's still by no means a gaming graphics card. So if you want this as a kind of weekend project that is not totally useless, I guess go for it. <laughs> I would like to thank my patrons, Joseph O, Nero Gamer, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.